this is the Provoke Prawn here to show you how to set up and wire the Be Quiet Lightwings LX fans. I'm going to show you how to connect them directly to your motherboard or connect them into your case so that you can control them with a button on the case if you have that capability as here in the Lightbase 600 LX. I'm also going to show you how to control the RGB lighting with your motherboard software and how to make sure they run at a good speed so they're not overly loud. I'm using the Be Quiet case here as a demonstration. So if you've got them set up and wired in your case already, I'll show you some tips for that. But I'm also gonna show you how to wire them in separately, including putting extra on a radiator or just into the case. Now these fans come in triple packs, which when you open up, you'll find three fans and three lots of screws, and then a mass of cables that you'll have to deal with that I'm going to help with. If you've got a case like I have here, you might find pre-installed fans. You can see we've got reverse blade fans on the side, which are intake fans, and you'll notice that they have a different design to the fan blades, so they face in a different direction to standard fans. On the back of these fans, these are noted as being reversed, and it's basically just reversing the airflow. Because as usual, if you have intake fans, usually you'd have to face them outwards towards the outside of the case. You can see with standard blade fans, we've got them top mounted here, for example, on the all-in-one cooler and one at the rear of the case as well. Those are exhausting. Reverse blade are intake fans. But if you want to do intake on the bottom, you'd have to put standard fans face down towards the bottom of the case so you'd see the rear something to bear in mind as we go through this now the be quiet lightwings lx fans the setup of them is fairly straightforward with some caveats depending on your motherboard so it comes with a, this cable coming out of it with essentially two connectors on it but there's actually three connectors on there and i'll show you what i mean as we go through this but at a basic level you've got a fan power connection and an rgb connection these are slightly different you will see that there is one connector here which actually has pins on it. And you've got three pins sticking out of it. The reason for that is we're going to daisy chain the fans together. So that's a male RGB connection. Then you've got a five volt, three pin RGB connector that connects to the motherboard and a system fan power cable that connects to the motherboard as well. And I'll show you where to plug those in in a second. So if you take three fans, assuming you're going to put them into a group and you want to chain these fans together in terms of the RGB lighting, you take the male RGB connector, the one with the pins in it, and plug it into the other female version on the next fan along in the chain. And then obviously you repeat this process across to the third fan. So you'll see now we have the next male RGB connector from the second fan. We'll plug that into the female RGB connector on the third fan. That way you're grouping up the RGB connections from one fan to the next fan to the next fan. Now this is great because it saves the number of cables that you have to plug into your motherboard because otherwise you'd have to individually plug these five volt three pin RGB connectors into the motherboard in different ports on the motherboard and that would be complicated and messy. Does mean that you've got a lot of cables though. You do have a lot of mess here. You can see there's a lot of wires to deal with and keeping things tidy can be a bit of an issue, but we'll get to that in a little while. So just to show you where these cables would connect on the motherboard to make it nice and clear, we'll take the standard fan. You'll see for the 5 volt RGB connection, that three pin, you're looking for a connector that looks like this. It will say RGB on it or ARGB in different versions, depending on which motherboard you're using. But it is three pin, so make sure you look out for that. You can see it's VDG. D LED one on this gigabyte motherboard, but it might have different naming conventions on different boards. You'll usually find two, maybe, or three, perhaps, sometimes just one of these connectors on your motherboard. It really depends on the motherboard design. You might find them at the bottom or at the top. You might find one at the bottom, one at the top, one at the side. It really varies wildly. But you can see with those three fans, you just need one RGB connector. But then obviously you've got three fan power connectors that need to plug in somewhere. You're looking for a system fan header or chassis fan header, marked SysFan or CHA fan, generally speaking. They'll often be at the bottom of the motherboard. You can see multiple ports here. You're plugging in your cable into those ports and you'll have to plug in all three cables, obviously, to make sure all three fans have the power that they're going to need from the motherboard. So that's a fairly straightforward connection. Now, obviously, I'm showing you this outside your PC build, so it's really clear and easy to see. The wiring of it becomes a bit, a bit more fiddly when it's actually in the case, but hopefully that's clear enough for you to view. But what about when you want to add three more fans into the system? Obviously, the RGB is pretty simple because you just daisy chain that together and then you plug those in. 
but you might not have very many of the system fan headers left, if any. You can see in this instance, I've just got one spare down the bottom there. So plugging the RGB in is easy enough, but finding enough system fan headers to be able to plug in additional fans is a bit more problematic. There are solutions to this, of course. Uh, if you're using the case as I am, I'll show you one in a second. But if you've got three fans and nowhere to plug them in, there are other solutions. You can actually buy separate controllers, which can help with this, or you can get splitter cables. So you can get these sort of Y splitter cables or triple splitter cables that you can use. I've got a Noctua one here as an example, but you can purchase different fan power cables like this pretty easily. And what this does is basically takes fan power from a couple of fans and puts it into a single connector. So a Y splitter will take two fans and then put them into one connector that can then still plug into the system fan header or chassis fan header on the motherboard. Obviously using these frees up ports on the motherboard that would otherwise be taken up by an individual fan. And in theory, you could use several of these thereby cutting down on the number of fans plugging in individually to those ports. So it's one way to do it. You can get triple splitters too, so you can put three fans into one connection. You do need to bear in mind the power draw from the fans to those specific ports to check the motherboard. But in most instances, you'll be fine connecting up three fans to one port. I'm also going to show you this connector later on for connecting fans up to the CPU fan header, which can be useful when putting these fans on a radiator, for example. But you can see that we've got a much easier solution here than having to plug in all those individual cables on the motherboard. And this can also help with cable management. So rather than running all these cables to the motherboard, you could run them to the splitter and then just run that to the motherboard. Another solution is something like this thermal right fan hub. So this is an ARGB and fan power hub. And essentially this allows you to plug in the RGB and fan power connectors to the hub itself. And then you run a cable from the hub to the motherboard in its place. Now this is powered, so it needs SATA power, but it is a good option and an affordable one as well. Essentially it works as a controller so that you can plug the fans into it, bypassing the need to plug them directly into the motherboard, or at least all the individual cables. On this controller, it has loads of ports on it, so you can plug in loads of fans onto it. And because it has free ports, you don't have to daisy chain the fans necessarily in terms of the RGB lighting, so they can just be plugged in with both the fan power and the RGB separately. So you can see I'm individually plugging in each of these fans, so all six fans will plug in here quite easily. Obviously, this is an additional purchase, but it's a pretty easy one, and it means that you can hide the cables away at the back of the case. Then you take the included fan power cable and RGB connection from this and plug it into your motherboard and it will need SATA power too, but you can see it's the same sort of logic, fan power and RGB connections, and then you'll still be able to control the lighting and fan power from the motherboard. Now with the Be Quiet Lightbase 600 LX, you'll find there are repeaters at the top and bottom included as standard. You might have this with other Be Quiet cases. Basically, the fans are wired into it, so you can see the RGB and fan power connections are wired directly into it. There's a free one at the bottom of this case, which doesn't have anything connected as standard, so you can use that as well. So if you're putting additional fans into the case, as I am here with these three fans, which I've got to put on the bottom of the case, I'd recommend, first of all, cable tidying the cables because you want to make sure everything's as neat as possible. So tidying those up, tying them together, and then we're going to use that to then run them to the rear. So as mentioned, for intake fans, you want to put them face down if they're standard fans into the bottom of the case, and then obviously run the cables through to the back, which is a little bit problematic because of the number of connectors there. So it was a little bit messy, and it was quite tight in this case, something to bear in mind, but that's why tidying up makes a difference. Then you run them through to the rear. Now you'd either plug these into the motherboard, as I've shown, or into the repeater. In this instance, plugging it into the bottom here, you can see fan power and RGB connections plug in down there. And then that controller at the top and bottom of the case needs SATA power. SATA power is also required for the thermal right controller. Now this is this cable, same sort of cable that you'd use for your SSDs and hard disk drives. It comes with your power supply unit, plugs into the power supply unit, and then it has these flat connectors on it that will plug into your drives, or in this instance, into the fan controllers. So you see it plugs into the SATA and peripheral port on a modular power supply unit, and then you have multiple connectors on that cable that you can plug into various different devices. So as standard, you'd use it for 2.5-inch SSDs or hard disk drives, 
but you can also plug fan power controllers into it. So a thermal right controller or these PWM repeaters that I'm showing in this case. This is obviously essential because although you've got a system fan header cable and an RGB connection coming from these repeaters to the motherboard so that you can still control the fan speed and the RGB lighting, they're obviously drawing a lot of power, so they need to be powered. So you're putting a lot of fans onto those repeaters. They need to draw power from somewhere. They're getting it from the power supply unit to make sure the fans get enough power. So make sure you've got this cable spare to be able to plug in to those devices when you're using them, and that'll ensure everything works smoothly. So pretty straightforward, as you can see, depending on what you're doing with your case, what case you're using and how you're setting up and how many fans you're putting into the system. If you're not putting loads of additional fans in, should be fairly straightforward. If you want to make your case more uniform by adding the same RGB fans across multiple different things, for example, swapping out the all-in-one cooler fans for Be Quiet fans as well, then you can do that too. So in this instance, I'm taking a Leonie Galahad 2 Lite and I'm swapping out the performance fans that came with it with the Be Quiet Lightwings LX fans. I'm putting them fans facing into the case so it's exhausting through the radiator and then apply the same logic that just did tidying the cables up and running them through to the back to hide away most of it. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to connect those fans up to the CPU fan header, and that way the fans are controlled by your motherboard. So to take the three fan power connections, I'm using that triple splitter that I showed you earlier on, which is obviously a separate purchase. Pretty easy to get hold of, though. And plug in all three fans that are on the radiator into that and then this cable can then be plugged into the CPU fan header. That way your motherboard will spin those fans faster when the CPU gets warm and therefore cool the coolant inside the cooler and help with cooling that down quickly. The AIO pump could then be plugged into the AIO pump header on the motherboard and the combination of those two should ensure that the system runs well and that your CPU is cooled effectively. So that's pretty handy. This is a rear connect motherboard, by the way, but you'll find the CPU fan header either on the top left on the rear connect or top right on a standard motherboard setup. And then you should find when you turn it on that the RGB lighting and fan power works on both. So pretty straightforward. Now for RGB lighting controls, you want to download your motherboard software. In this instance, on this setup, is the Gigabyte Control Center and RGB Fusion. But it might be MSI Mystic Lite if you're using an MSI motherboard or Armory Crate for a Zeus motherboards. This software allows you to control the RGB lighting and you can choose from various different effects in there so you can cycle through them. If you plug them into the 5 volt header on the motherboard as shown, you should be able to control all of these different things. In this Be Quiet case, as long as those repeaters are plugged into the motherboard's 5 volt RGB header, the same logic applies. So you can do that. And also the pump here is plugged in there as well. So basically all of these things are synced up nicely, changing through the different effects as we go through. Pretty straightforward to do that. Now I want to show you how to make sure the fans aren't too loud. So turn your PC on, mash the delete key on it until you go into the BIOS. When you're in the BIOS, what you want to do is look for the fan settings. On the Gigabyte motherboard, it's called Smart Fans. What you want to do is go to each of the fans that you've plugged in, so each of the ports you've used, in this case CPU fan, and look for the fan control mode. What you want to do is set that to PWM mode. This should stop the fans from running at maximum speed as default if that's something you're finding happening. The fans are particularly loud that can help. If you click through the other system fan headers on the motherboard, you'll see which ones you plugged into in case you can't remember because you'll see how many RPMs they're currently spinning at. So you can see that here with SysFan1. So just repeat that process, set it to PWM mode and that should help. Now you can also go to the fan speed controls and change that to silent perhaps. But obviously this is going to have a negative impact on the cooling performance, but it might help with keeping things quiet. You can also adjust the fan curve, but do make sure that you save when you're finished. Hopefully this has helped with wiring up the fans for you. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Check out the description to find more related content that you might find useful. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.